Hey, what's up? This is Jamal Abbott. Thanks for tuning in. Here to talk to you today about the money moves T-Mobile is making. So this company has been making quite a few moves, making a lot of noise in the market. And I want to share with you today two specific moves that they've made. One being the first carrier in the world to announce standalone 5G status, as well as becoming the second largest carrier in the United States. So jumping into standalone 5G coverage. So they made this announcement here just in the last couple of weeks that they're the first carrier worldwide to reach operational status with a 5G standalone network. So what they've done up to this point is operated in a non-standalone network, which is in a sense a hybrid network where you combine a 4G network with the 5G network. There's some limitations with that, but that's something that they initially moved uh, in the market with, as well as some of the other companies uh, within the United States and actually in worldwide. So what exactly is 5G standalone? So that's a term that's used to describe the core of the network, which has no ties to 4G whatsoever, but is purely a 5G enabled network. And with this, and I'm reading a couple stats here from T-Mobile. With this, they have expanded 5G coverage by 30% by enabling the standalone network, which covers nearly 250 million people in more than 7,500 cities. And with this, as we talked about in previous episodes, this allows for new applications to come about, things like augmented reality, virtual reality, cloud gaming, and real-time translation. And here's a direct quote from T-Mobile. Since Sprint became part of T-Mobile, we rapidly combining the networks of a supercharged and carrier while expanding our nationwide 5G footprint. And today we take a massive step into the future with standalone 5G architecture. So that's comments from Neville Ray, who's the president of technology at T-Mobile. So 5G focuses on a, a couple steps. The first step being in a non-standalone architecture, this next step we're looking at is a standalone architecture which allows for those new applications that I've talked about and as well as a 40% improvement in latency. In addition to that this allows for their 600 megahertz spectrum to be completely expanded across their entire footprint. So there's uh, no holding the 5G network back. There's improvements to how this network operates and this is all because of the fact that this company has been improving and investing in network upgrades to their architecture. So other carriers will be going down this path but T-Mobile has made the claim for first for standalone 5G architecture. In addition to that, uh, subscribers that want to take advantage of this must have a compatible device that supports this capability. So something just to keep in mind with that. The second money move that T-Mobile has made came during a recent earnings call where they announced that they have acquired 98.3 million total subscribers on their network. So this makes them the second largest carrier in the United States. So overtaking AT&T and now they trail behind Verizon in this spot. So this is pretty significant and uh, just interesting just thinking about how far T-Mobile has come. And if you're not familiar with the history of T-Mobile, let's uh, rewind here just the last nine years. Nine years ago, T-Mobile was actually looking at merging with AT&T and uh, combining because of the fact that they were in a pretty tough financial position. Ultimately, that merger did not take place, which led to T-Mobile getting a couple of things which allowed them to become the carrier that they are right now one of which was a couple billion dollars in cash as a breakup penalty fee from AT&T, as well as getting access to a couple billion dollars worth of spectrum, which allowed them to build upon the network that they currently have in its place. What's also interesting too, at that time when T-Mobile failed to merge with AT&T, there was even talks about Sprint looking to buy T-Mobile to become a larger third carrier to compete in the market. So we fast forward here today and it's actually T-Mobile that has bought Sprint, which has become the third largest carrier, now moving into the second spot, overtaking AT&T for that throne. So it's really interesting to see how this is all playing out. And we're still early in this merger in the sense that this took place in April and now here we are in August and T-Mobile is making these announcements 
letting everybody know that they're not playing around. So those are the money moves that T-Mobile's making. Let me know uh, what you think about this. And if you're interested in jumping on T-Mobile now that they are the second largest carrier in the United States. So once again, this is Jamal Abbott. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, you can hit me up a couple different ways. You reach me via email, jamal at thephoneguy.com. You can also hit me up on social media and that's at Jamal Abbott. You can also go to jamalabbott.com and then hit me up there and leave me some feedback. So I'd love to hear from you and get your thoughts on T-Mobile and let me know if you're thinking about switching over to them or if you're still kind of keeping your eye on them. So once again, I thank you so much for tuning in and I'll talk to you soon.